In one of my previous jobs, I do engineering as a full-time occupation without mentioning the company. I made a pretty big mistake that was going to cause a large financial loss. I was stressed out, nervous, and anxious. I was instructed to go meet a specific person who might be able to solve the issue. On my way to him, someone stops me and asks, Majid, where are you going? I told him I'm going to meet so-and-so as you might have heard of the problem that I caused. He said, oh, you're going to meet this person. This person you're about to meet is also known as a very nice guy. Before moving further with the story, just by knowing this man is also known as the nice guy, no doubt made me feel comfortable. And you will agree to that, that this man will not make fun of me, will genuinely help me in all these beautiful feelings. Why? Just because this man is also known as the nice guy. With this being said, and Allah is the best of examples, how do you feel when you are told Allah is also known as Al-Mujib? The one who responds to your call whenever you call upon him. Allah Al-Mujib, the one who gives you whatever is best for you whenever you ask him. If this does not make your heart rest to a certain extent, then there might be a serious deficiency in understanding who Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is. Brothers and sisters, all of us are poor and weak. And we tend to complain to others about our state, hoping they may fulfill our need. And if one time we record ourselves with a camera, how we complain to our brothers and sisters genuinely, we will be so amazed at how focused and sincere and sometimes even cry when we complain to others. And there might be something, nothing wrong with it as long as we don't cross the limits. But you know what's wrong is when we are in a state of sajda and prostration, the closest position you can ever be to Allah as the Prophet of Allah وسلم, has said, when you are in front of Allah Al-Kareem, the most generous, Al-Ghani, the rich and self-sufficient, the one when he wants something to happen, he says, Kun fayakun bi, and it is. And in that state, we're not as focused. We're not as passionate. We're not as sincere. As if Allah is the poor and stingy, and our friend is a rich and generous. We seek Allah's refuge from that understanding. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Allah says in the Quran, Wama qadru Allah, haqqa qadr. Allah said, People have not appraised, have not appreciated Allah the way Allah deserves to be appreciated. Then Allah says, Wal ardu jami'an qabdatuhu yawm al qiyama, wa samawatu matwiyatum bi yamine, subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. Then Allah says, Since you don't appreciate Allah, then Allah tells you how strong He is. He says, Allah folds the heaven and folds the earth. Then Allah says, I'm free from all those who associate with me. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. In hopes of this khutbah, even though it might be 25 minutes or so. But I believe whenever I give a talk, and you should sit in any khutbah, in any reminder with that mentality, that this may change my life. This is how Rasulullah preached, and that's how Rasulullah taught the people to behave. People have changed, not from a khutbah, only from a statement. A man became a Muslim when the Prophet began by saying, In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. The man who was a non-Muslim, he said such a beautiful statement, this is definitely coming from a Prophet. Not just that, there are people who became Muslim from a smile, Allahu Akbar. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walked into Medina, and one of the ahbar of the Jewish, Jewish people was sitting on the roof, and he was looking, he's like, Wallahi, hada laysa bi wajhi kathab. Allahu Akbar. This is the face, by, I swear by Allah, it's not the face of a liar and became Muslim. So sit, open your hearts. Maybe some words you hear, an ayah or a hadith that improves your life and improves your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask God to bless this speech. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. Our hopes is to be like Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. He understood what does it mean that Allah is also known as al-Mujib. You know what he said? Inni la ahmilu hamma al-ijaba. Wallahi, remarkable statement. He said, I'm not worried whether Allah will respond to my dua or not. I'm not worried because I know for a fact if, if I asked Allah for something, Allah will give it to me. Then what are you worried about, Ya Amar? May Allah be pleased by you. Walakinni ahmilu hamma dua Allahu Akbar. But I'm worried on my side, not his side. I'm worried whether I will make dua whether I will put the effort, whether I will be sincere, whether I will take the action. I know for a fact, if I made dua, I was sincere and take action, Allah will definitely respond. Look at Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu an. He understood what does it mean that Allah is also known as Ar-Rahman. He said when Yawm Al-Qiyamah comes, and let's say Allah gives me the option for him to judge me or for my parents to judge me, 
I would choose Allah over my parents. And anybody here who has a child appreciates this example. Why? Because I know Allah has more mercy towards me than my parents. Allahu Akbar. May Allah allow us to understand His mercy. I mean, Rabbil Alameen. With this being said, brothers and sisters, we have to understand the concept of dua, not just from the etiquettes that you should fulfill, which is wonderful. Facing the Qibla. Raise your hands like this in terms of desperation. Have wudu. Wonderful. Begin with praising Allah. Begin with a salah and salam upon Rasulullah. Wonderful. But what we need to know is whom are you asking from? We have to put the effort, we have to educate ourselves, remind ourselves, who is it that I'm asking from? For Wallahi, when you do so, everything in your life, literally speaking, will change. If you ever attend a fundraising dinner, you don't have to be a fundraiser yourself. When someone comes, he asks, so what's the community like? What's the status here? What do we begin with? They tell you, Masakin, you know, people here, begin with 100 pounds. Another community says, begin with 10,000 pounds. You adjust. If we go to a rich, rich, rich community, and I say, Bismillah, Bismillah, brothers and sisters, let's do this. Bismillah, for Allah's sake, we have to exp expand the message about 1 million pounds. Bismillah, who will be the first person to donate 10 pounds? Bismillah. People will be like, shame on you. Beginning with 10 pounds? People will be offended by that. Allah's the best of examples. How dare we shame on me and shame on those who make dua to Allah and with disrespect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doubt will he really be able to do that or not. A'udhu billah min ash rajim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in an authentic hadith, Ya ibadi, O my slaves. So every slave sitting here, pay attention. May Allah make us slaves of Allah and die as slaves of Allah. Ya ibadi. This is yet to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See His majesty, see His power. Enjoy this. If every single one of you, from the beginning of time till the end of time, insakum wa jinnakum, all of the human beings and all of the jinn, Allahu Akbar, you're appreciating the numbers. Qamu fi sa'idin wahidin fasa'aluni. Every single one of you raised your hands to Allah, every single one of you, at the same exact instant. And you asked Allah for something. I'll give every single one of you what you asked for. My kingdom will not diminish or decrease whatsoever. Except whatever is decreased from an ocean when you dip a needle into it. Allahu Akbar subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your Lord. What's amazing is not only how Allah as Sami' the all hearing was able to know who asked and who spoke. It's not just Allah Al-Alim that knows what you asked for and what's internal and what's external. How Allah Al-Basir saw the requester. But what's also amazing is how Allah Al-Mujib responded to every request. This is the one whom you worship. There's a sister. This, I'm telling you the story second person. There's a sister whom her husband has left for some time for some task he had to do. So she stayed over her father's place. She had a daughter. Very poor family. When she moved to that house, that daughter, the granddaughter, now she became very sick. So all what the mother can do is pray to raka'at to Allah, grab a wet towel, put it on the forehead of the girl, and make dua to Allah. That's all that means she can take. Allah is my witness that someone came and knocked on the apartment at 1 a.m. in the morning. The mother put on their hijab, and her father came, which is the grandfather of the granddaughter, Said, open the door, Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam. It was a man wearing a suit with a briefcase. He said, can I go check on your granddaughter who is sick? He said, yeah, sure, tafadda, come in. The doctor walks in, sees the granddaughter, checks on her. He said, okay, you know, her case is a little difficult, but I'll give you some medication, a prescription. Make sure you buy it as soon as possible, and inshallah, she'll be fine. The mother looks at her father, they smile. Because they can't even afford the medication. But Jazakallah khairan anyways. The doctor walks, leaves the apartment and stands right by the door. The mother says Jazakallah khairan. He says, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَجَزَاكُمْ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا And the doctor is still standing. So now he's getting a little awkward. Okay, move on. He said, where is the fee for this private visit? She said, what private fee? What visit? He said, what do you mean? You called me. I left my house left my city to come to this poor village of yours. It was a long trip. 
and coming, checking on your daughter and all that work and you say, what fee, what private visit? He said, doctor, wallahi, we never called you. He's like, he's stingy and you're a liar too. Doctor, I swear by the one who created me and you, I don't even have a phone in my house. He said, what is wrong with you? Isn't this the apartment of so-and-so? She said, no, it's next door right here. He came to her and he told her, Wallahi, it is Allah who sent me to you. Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. There's no such thing as coincidence. I'm going to come back to you. He goes to the apartment that actually called him, subhanAllah. Finished with him, came back. And he told her, what's your story? She told him the story. My husband went for a task. I made dua to Allah because my daughter was really sick. All what I can do, grab a wet towel, put it on the forehead of my daughter, hoping Allah will cure her. He told her, it was Allah who sent me to you. And I will pay for the all medication. And I'll give you a monthly allowance until your husband comes back. Allahu Akbar. And then she enjoyed that ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After many months when the husband came back, she told him the story. The husband and the wife, they went to the doctor to say, Jazakallahu khaira. And then the doctor stopped the monthly allowance. But just to teach you how beautiful the dua was, subhanAllah, actually, my shaykh was saying that when that mother and that father had difficult financial situations, she would tell her husband, how about you leave for some time, have Allah provide for us. She lived it, she lived it. We have to appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ever underestimate the dua. There's a true story, I'm telling you this once again, second person, Sheikh Salah al-Maghamsi. He's speaking to one of the people who used to make Hajj since the 1970s, every single year. Every single year. I reached until 2012, from 1970s to 2012. Over 30 years of Hajj. He asked him, what's your secret that you were able to make Hajj every single year? He said, I will tell you. The first Hajj I've made in the 70s, I went to some sort of a minivan or a minibus. And then there were rows parallel to each other. But the last row was connected. There's no space where you people walk through. In the last row, there was a very old lady that was squished, very tight situation position. And I looked at her and I felt bad for her. And I told a couple, a husband and wife, if the husband can go back and switch with this old lady so the old lady can relax and have more space. I told the husband this, and the husband said, I'm sorry, I will not change this, my seat because my, myself and my wife, we came in early for a purpose to sit in these comfortable seats. So I don't want to give up my seat just like that. He said, Ahi, come, look at this old lady, look at her. She's looking at the position, she's you know, crumbling up amongst these people, squished in between them. You're a healthy young man. I ask you by Allah, go back, switch the seats. Allah will reward you. The man says, I'm sorry. I came, I came early. I want to be by my wife and so on. Back and forth, back and forth. Then the man said, okay, I will switch. He see, as he switched, the old lady moved forward, amazed and happy. She extends her arms, extends her legs, feels so comfortable. She makes dua to the brother. She says, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow you to make hajj every single year. 1970s, the brother swears by Allah. There were years that came. He had no intention whatsoever. And all of a sudden the visa comes up. He swears by Allah. There were years he doesn't even afford to even go for hajj. And someone says, Akhi, I got a free spa right here. You want to join us? Allahu Akbar. This is the barakah of the dua. Don't ever underestimate your dua. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us moved by these stories. And you have to utilize that movement in your heart. I'll say it once again. You have to utilize those movement in your heart if you've been touched by a hadith or an ayah. Why? Zakariya alayhi salam, a very old man. And I ask you by Allah, how would you view a man whom Allah says, shayba. His hair is full of white hair, meaning how old he was. And he's in the first row making dua to Allah. Allah grant me a child. Oh Allah, grant me a child. An old man, over 80 years old. We all know that most people will accuse him of being mentally ill. This man needs help. This man is, you know, majnoon. But it's us who need help of those who accuse him because this man never gave up on Allah. And one time when he walked on Maryam as Allah says in Surah Ali Imran, كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابِ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَ Every time Zakaria walks into Maryam, her place, he finds some rizq, provision that no one in the city has. That's not the season of that fruit. قَالَ يَا مَرْيَمُ أَنَّ لَكِ هَذَا مَرْيَمُ How is it possible you have this? قَالَتْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Allahu Akbar. 
إن الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب. It is Allah who gives with no accountability. When Zakaria saw the dua of the mother of Maryam taking place, when he saw the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right after that, for those who know the surah, right after that, what happened? He was moved by this. And he went to Allah, made dua to Allah once again, but now with more and more sincerity and yaqeen. Oh Allah, I beg you, Ya Allah. I beg an old man, shivering perhaps when making dua. I beg you, Ya Allah, grant me a righteous progeny. You are Sami' the all-hearing of my dua. The next ayah. The angels came to, yeah, to Zakaria, gave him the good news, inspired him that Allah gives you the glad tidings, that Allah has blessed you with a child, and Allah named him Yahya. So don't ever underestimate your dua. Know whom you're asking from. I'm not going to talk about the etiquettes right now. The last few minutes that we have in the khutbah will do. But you need to appreciate who you have and who you put your forehead on the ground to. It is the one who is able to do everything and anything. It is Allah Al-Qareeb, the close and near. Allah puts the name Al-Qareeb with Mujib. Inna Rabbi Qareebun Mujib. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ مُجِيبٌ قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ Allah puts, I am close to you. When Allah is close to you, it makes you comfortable when you make dua. When Allah is close to you, it makes you feel comfortable to make dua, even if you think it's silly. Even if you think it's embarrassing. Allah is close, already, already knows. When Allah is close to you, you don't have to go into much detail. You don't say, Ya Allah, my rear tire is 30 PSI. Ya Allah, this, this and that. No. Ya Allah, help me with my car. That's it. It's done. So I say whatever I have said. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله and I seek Allah's forgiveness to forgive me and forgive you all. So seek Allah's forgiveness. In those few moments, inshallah, I will sit for a minute, a minute and a half or so. Be as genuine as you can. Make dua to Allah, the one who can do anything and everything He wants. كن فيكون No matter what sin that you've done in your life, from zina to alcohol to, drug, to drugs to this to that. Wallahi a moment of genuine regret right now. Regret and remorse. Promising Allah will never do this again. Right now, bi-idhnillah, a new white page. Not just that. And Allah will substitute your sins to good deeds. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ ذِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا Seek Allah's forgiveness for He is Al-Ghafoor Al-Rahim. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your dua. May Allah accept everything that you've mentioned. May Allah lift your hardships and have ease in your life, and bless you and bless your families. In the last five minutes that we have, what are some things that we need to do now? We know a little bit about Allah. We know a little bit about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the things that you need to do on your side now. I'll mention a few of them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ud'u Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba. Make dua to Allah and you're a hundred percent certain Allah will accept. You cannot have 99.9999. No, no, no. You make dua, Allah accept. This is done. This is the confidence level. If I ask any of the brothers right now, please hold my tablet right now. I doubt any one of you will doubt whether he will take it or not. And I didn't even work it out with him. Because a respectful person will take it, no problem. Then how dare we make dua to Allah and like, mm, will he accept or not? La a'udhu billah. He will accept. And he said, don't ever make dua and say, insha'Allah. The Prophet ﷺ says in an authentic hadith, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا مُكْرِيَ لَهَ No one forces Allah to do things. Oh Allah, اغفر لي in shit. No, no. May Allah grant us Jannah, insha'Allah. No, 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 no. Oh Allah, grant us Jannah. It's done. You don't say, oh Allah, grant us Jannah, insha'Allah. May Allah I forgive you, insha'Allah. No, none of the attitude. Because the Prophet wants us to have certainty. The other thing, brothers and sisters, you have to have your income, your clothing, your food from halal. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a man who'd be traveling, check mark, wonderful position to make dua. Ash'ath Akbar in a very humble position, another check mark, wonderful stage. Raises their hands to Allah, sunnah, check mark number three. He says, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, calls upon Allah, not a grave, not this, not that, wonderful to Allah, four check marks. However, mat'amuhu min haram. Mashrabuhu min haram. Malbasuhu min haram. Their clothing is from haram. Whether the money that you bought the clothing with or the clothing itself. 
the food itself or the money you bought the food with is haram. Then the Prophet says, فَأَنَّ يُسْتَجَابُ لذلك. How does this man expect Allah to answer their dua? You know why is this wonderful? Because if this man truly trusted Allah, pay attention, if this man truly trusted Allah, he would have, have never resorted to these avenues to make income or to buy their clothing or to have food. Subhanallah. Now you go back to Allah. You go back to Allah from day one. May Allah forgive us our shortcomings. Amin Rabbil Alameen. And the last condition we'll share with you, inshaAllah. I can make dua to Allah. Oh Allah, raise the microphone, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, raise the microphone. And we all say, Amin. Ya Allah, raise the microphone. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. And we read the Quran. Ya Allah. We wait till Ramadan. The last 10 nights of Ramadan. Ya Allah, raise the microphone. Wallahi, it will not be raised until I do this. Until I put the action. You have to take the means whenever you make dua to Allah. Otherwise, the ulama, they said, if you ask Allah for something and you're not taking action, that is disrespect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How would you feel when one of your family members sees you like, yeah, I'm sitting in the masjid all day long, all day long. He's like, yeah, make dua, I'm making dua for Allah to grant me a job. Work on your resume, work on your CV, customize it, work, go store to store, knock on the doors. And stay in the masjid, but as long as you take the means. But you just sitting down, Umar al-Khattab got really angry one time for those who know the story. He came to the masjid during duhr time, which is usually, that's when people usually work. He's like, what are you guys doing? He said, we're making dua to Allah. He got his stick. He's like, Allah doesn't make it rain gold and silver. Get up, go find a job. Go put action. And that's what we have to behave with. In conclusion, one time there was a brother who was very committed to salah. Very committed. I, I'm a witness to this a blizzard, thunderstorm back in Canada. He always comes to the masjid. Wonderful brother, mashallah. I would drive sometimes, see him on the sidewalk, I'll go pick him up. He has no car, no bus pass, no bike, nothing. All of a sudden, the brother stopped showing up to the masjid. I go to his house, knock on the door, and he opens the door. I say, "Salam alaikum. Then he curses. He's like, what the, he mentions, do you want? I'm really confused. Very dedicated person committed to the masjid, and that's your response is wajib. Saying salam is sunnah. Responding is an obligation. Don't tell me I hate that brother, I have issues. No, no issues. When you say salam, you have to respond back. May Allah allow us to follow the sunnah. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Then he said, um, he's like, What do you want? I'm like, I came to check on you. Are you, you were absent for a week from the masjid or so. He's like, I'm healthy, I'm standing, now move on in life. I'm like, I'm not moving on until you tell me what's wrong with you. Because we're a little close, so I can have, you know, subjective. Back and forth, back and forth. He said, like, okay, come here. So I go to his house. What's your story? He said, you know how dedicated I am to the masjid? Yes or no? I'm like, yes, I admit to that. He's like, I come to the masjid regardless of the weather. I have no bike. I walk every single time. I'm like, Allah's my witness. Yes, I do believe that. And I personally pick you up. Yes, I know. But what's the problem? Why you stop coming to the masjid? What's wrong with your attitude? He said, I've been coming to the masjid for the past nine months, making all kinds of different dua. All kinds of different dua. This dua, this dua, that dua, that dua, this dua. Not a single one of them was accepted. Why should I worship him? And this is a high school student. May Allah protect us from overzealousness with no knowledge. So there's a lot of things you can tell that, but there's a lot. But part of that conclusion with this hadith, I told him, haven't you heard the hadith of Rasulullah Whenever you make dua to Allah, one of three things happen. Number one, Rasulullah says, if you ever ask Allah for something, either Allah will give you what you ask for. So your dua goes up, whatever you ask for comes down. Or number two, Allah Al-Hakim, the All-Wise, knows whatever you ask for is not good for you. So your dua goes up, but no blessing goes down, but your dua goes up and blocks, blocks a hardship, or a calamity that was about to fall upon you. The third is that your dua goes up and stays there and then transforms into hasanat on your skill Yawm Al Qiyamah. The Sahaba heard this win, win, win situation. They said, then we will never stop making dua. Look how they behaved. If that's the case, they know for a fact Allah will respond. But how? I don't know. But you know Allah will respond to it. Whether the Prophet say, shame on you, don't have the attitude of always making dua. No, he said, Allahu Akthar, Allah is more generous. Yes, you should have this attitude, always make dua. Now the question, which one of the three is best? The best one of the three is whatever Allah sees best for you. With this being said, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your beautiful faces. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor you. 
I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yaghfira lakum jami'a to forgive your shortcomings and forgive my shortcomings. I ask Allah al-wadud, the all-loving, an yatawaddada ilayna. Wa I ask Allah al-Rahman an yirhamanna bi rahmatihi lati wasi'at kulla shay. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your lives and bless your families and strengthen your ties of kinship. And yaqawwi sirata arhamin, ameen rabbal alameen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your time and bless your health. And I ask Allah to allow you to utilize your free time and your good health. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعلنا أن نستغل صحتنا وفراغ أوقاتنا أمين رب العالمين